Hello, I'm Michael Crowley from fluidmechanics.co.uk. I'm a hydraulics engineer and I specialise in transient flow and surge analysis modelling, including water hammer modelling. This is my second video on the subject of water hammer. In the previous video, I explained the phenomenon of a water hammer and um, what pressures you generate during a water hammer event and the fact that you generate a pressure wave which travels up the pipe. In this second video I'm going to discuss what actually happens when the water hammer wave reaches the end of the pipe. Well there is a reflection and we'll discuss how that wave is reflected and we'll talk about the time periods that those wave reflections occur in. We'll look at pipeline vibration and how that's induced by these pressure waves going backwards and forwards up the pipeline. I'll also discuss how fast the valve at the end of the pipe actually has to close for it to induce a water hammer event. So if I just briefly recap what we discussed in the previous video, I showed a tank, a header tank, connected to a pipeline. We had a level of fluid in the tank, which pushed the fluid along the pipeline with a velocity U, and the fluid went into an open tank. We then had an instantaneous closure at the end of the pipeline, which induced a pressure wave which travelled up the pipe. And there is the pressure wave front, and that goes up the pipeline at velocity C, and the velocity in this section of the pipe was zero and the initial velocity was still in that section of the pipe. I showed the Joukowsky equation which determines how much pressure rise you get across that wavefront was rho c u which is the density of the fluid, the wave speed c and u which is the change in velocity across the wavefront. I then went on to show how you actually calculate C, the wave speed, and it's basically Hooke's law that for a perfectly rigid pipe, the wave speed is the bulk modulus over the density of the fluid. For fluids such as water, that would be equal to 1,480 meters per second, but that wave speed was significantly influenced by the, the, the pipeline, the, the material of the pipe, the wall thickness of the pipe. And there is a modified Hooke's law formula to take into account that, which is 1 on rho 1 on k plus C E on C. Let's check that. Apologize. Which is basically this this part of the equation is the same as this bit up here, but this is the diameter of the pipe the Young's modulus of the material the pipe is made out of and the wall thickness. Now in the previous um, video we then went on to look at what the, what the wave speed would be in a sort of 15 millimeter copper pipe and I showed that worked out, uh, let me just get the number, C for a copper pipe was 1,254 meters per second. A copper pipe is actually very stiff but then we talked about other pipes like garden hoses where it could be a few hundred meters per second and plastic pipes. So this, this quite, that can make quite a big difference to the, to the pressure rise. Okay, so we have the pressure wave which is traveling up the pipe and eventually it will get to this position here and then be reflected backwards and forwards. So we need to define what's happening within, within the pipe. First of all, we'll need to define the velocity in the pipe and the pressure in the pipe at various instances in time. I've got subscript T there, and also in position along the pipe. 
what position the pipe is. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to split the pipe up into three sections for the sake of this explanation. I'll call that position zero, position one, position two, and position three. And the wave will travel up the pipe, going up at speed C. When the valve or the end of the pipe is closed, we're going to call that time T zero. When the wave travels up the pipe and it gets to this position one, so where it is on, on the drawing there, we'll call that T one. When the wave gets to the next position, we'll call that T two. When it gets to the end of the pipe, we'll call that T three. The pipe, the wave will be reflected back up the pipe and we'll discuss how that ha happens. When it gets to the next going back, next position going back, we'll call that T four, etc. etc. Before the valve at the end of the pipe is closed, when the pipe is open, the initial conditions where the velocity in the pipe is U all the way along the pipe, so the UI for the U initial, we'll call that T minus one. Okay, so let's start off at T minus one. We'll draw two plots. One will be velocity in the pipe, U, and the other will be pressure, P. And this is at T minus 1, T minus 1. Okay, so the initial velocity, at 0, will be the same all the way on the pipe. The pressure, this is zero, that's zero bar gauge, okay, one bar absolute if it's going into an atmosphere or to an open tank. The pressure here, if this is got a head of H, is um, the pressure, so actually it's the pressure at um, T minus one, three equals rho g h. So in other words, it's the, the, the density of the fluid, the gravity, times the, the head of the fluid, h. Sorry. Now, in the previous video, we discussed what sort of surge pressures you could get with um, flow at one meter down a pipe. So if we had one meter flow, and this was a, a, a copper pipe, then the pressures that you would generate when you do an instantaneous valve closure would be 12 bar, 12 and a half bar. Now that's significantly more than these pressures that you've got here. So in terms of where we're going to be on the scale for pressure, we are going to be slightly above zero at that point there, but it's not really much. And effectively what will happen, unfortunately I can't draw the line straight enough, it will come down to zero at the far end where it actually exits the pipe. Now for clarity here, I'm just going to assume that it's the same it's, it's zero all the way along. So, we now go to time T, T zero. And we close the end of the pipe. So what happens? The instant we close the end of the pipe, the velocity at the very end of the pipe is zero. And we now get it's still the same pressure all the way along the pipe, except at the end where we get all of a sudden this step change in pressure, the surge pressure. The wave then travels along and gets to this position here. So this is now, we now go to time T, T1. T1. And what's happened? Well, the velocity has now stopped as far as that. So actually the velocity is zero, goes on there, zero from there. And the pressure 
But now it's this high pressure all the way up to that point. That's T, T1. You could then go to T2. And velocity goes to there. Stop. Okay, and then we finally get to the wave, pressure wave gets as far as the end of the pipe. T3. T3. You've got that situation. So basically, the whole of the pipe fluid is stopped, but also the whole of the pipe, the pressure is at this high surge pressure. Now, when we did this for the, um, the, the copper pipe, that was 12.5 bar, as I've shown in the previous video. But it doesn't matter. It's just a, at, a, at a significantly raised pressure. When you look at the pipe, you've got a whole pressurized pipe with the flows stationary. That's unsustainable because the pressure there is rho GH. So that's, that can't exist. So what's now going to happen is the flow in the pipe, the pressurized fluid in the pipe, is actually going to start wanting to come back out of the pipe. So effectively, that pressure that's in the pipe is going to push the fluid out. So effectively, the pressure now is instantaneously, when the wave gets to time, time three, it's going to go negative. And effectively, the flow velocity, the negative velocity that you get, will be equal to what the positive flow velocity was in the first one. So it'll go up. Now, if we then go to, and, and, and also the pressure will drop down to zero at that point. So if we now go along to T time period T4, what you have then so just like that. So now the pressure wave is going back in the opposite direction. And if we go to T5, like that, that's T5, and then when we get to T6, time T6, just like that, it's gone all the way down to the far end of the, um, the pipeline. So that's at time T6. Now, that's unsustainable because you've now got a negative flow, but the end of the pipe is closed off. So how, where's the flow going to come from? There is no flow. So effectively, what's going to happen now is instantaneously, the flow that was going in there is now going to stop and come down to zero, back down to zero flow. And the pressure wave is going to start traveling back again in this direction again. So so a few seconds ago, when we were up to T6, the, the wave was going in that direction. Now it's coming back again in the other direction. So if we now go on to T7, the wave will have got to there. Okay. And T7, the velocity from there to there is stopped. And from there to there, we've still got this negative velocity. But what we haven't decided is what's happening in the pressure in that bit of pipe work there. Well, what's happened to the velocity? It's, it's driven by the, the Joukowsky equation. So the Joukowsky equation tells you how much pressure is generated for a change in velocity. But what you've got to remember is the velocity change this time is negative. So actually the pressure change is rho c minus u. Because it's gone the other way. So, if we took the previous example, we had 12.5 bar positive pressure. <coughs> and if we go negative, well, that means we're going to have 12.5 bar negative pressure. But that's not possible. You cannot get negative pressures. You can only get pressures down to absolute zero. Abs we are talking about zero bar gauge, which is one bar absolute. So, effectively, you can only get pressure of minus one bar. So that's as far as it will drop down. So actually the pressure is not going to be minus 12. It's going to be effectively coming back in this direction. It's going to be 
Well, it's not going to be minus one. It's going to be down to the cavitation pressure or the vapor pressure of the water. You've probably also got air in there, which will come out. So that will limit the pressure. Now, but then, but how does this equation make sense? Because I previously showed that that's what it equals. You know, it's C times U. The, it's, the, it's the pressure. But well, what's actually happening here is that this, the velocity is not the same either. So basically, if we go back to Hooke's law. It's the square root of k in rho. When I worked out originally the velocity for c, it was for solid water. We've now got uh, a mixture of vapor, possibly air in the water coming back. That's going to significantly reduce that number there. So effectively, yes, the velocity changes, it's minus one, but actually the speed is going to be a lot less going back in the opposite direction. And so therefore, when you do the calculation, the pressure comes out to this minus one bar. So then let's go along to time T8. And it goes to there. And then T9. And we're back to the other end. So that's T9. So that's T9. So we've now got to the situation where the flow in the pipeline has stopped and the whole of the pipeline is under vacuum pressure, minus one bar. Now that is unsustainable. So what's going to happen, because the pressure there we know is this rho GH, is that the flow is actually going to then travel back in the opposite direction into the pipe. So we're now going to get a negative flow, sorry, positive flow back into the pipe. And so if we go up to time period 10, the wave we've got to there, and the pressure in the pipe will now be going like that. Okay, that's 10, then we get to 11. Then we get to 12. So we're now at position time to time interval 12. And if you look at this, we've basically got low pressure or zero pressure in the pipe. And we have got um, the initial velocity in the pipe. That comes back to the same as what we had initially, just before we closed the valve. Now we close, the valve is closed, so we get the same effect as, as, as if we instantaneously closed the valve. So the flow stops, and we get the pressure surge, and then that comes back in the opposite direction. So effectively, after the wave has gone there, back, there and back again, four cycles, it's repeating. So every fourth length, it actually repeats the, the whole cycle, then starts again. Is that right? Yes. So it's like that. So if it's every four cycles, um, that actually is the frequency of the, of the system. That is the frequency of, of, of the wave going backwards and forwards. So if we go back to the previous video when we were talking about a sort of a domestic plumbing situation and um, we wanted to work out the natural frequency the pipe would vibrate at, or the frequency that it would be forced to vibrate at, that may or may not be the same as the natural frequency of the pipe work. We can say that, um, that the time period is four times the length of the pipe over C, the velocity in the pipe. Now, that C is a bit complicated because as I explained in the video a little earlier on, 
Um, when the wave is coming back, this C may change due to cavitation. But it gives you an approximation to the sort of frequencies that you can do just using that sort of base, using the constant C. So if we had, say, pipes of about 20 meters long, that'd be four pipes by 20, and if we divided that by so the copper pipe, one, two, five, four, that would equal 0.635 seconds, which is equivalent to 15 hertz. So I think that might be something similar to what you might have experienced if you've seen some sort of pipe vibrating in your home or something like that. Now the next thing we need to think about is how quickly does a valve have to close for it to be considered water hammer or to induce a water hammer effect? So I'll clear off a bit of space here. So we have the initial situation, the flow going down the pipe, and then we instantaneously, we, we start, we won't instantaneously close the valve this time, we'll gradually close the valve. So we're going to gradually close the valve, and as we close the valve, it will send up a wave, a wave going up the pipe. Okay? That wave will go up with velocity c. Now this is not the same as the, um, the original case where you've got a complete this is going to be a gradual increasing. So basically what will happen is that on this side of the wave, the velocity will still be the initial velocity. And on this side, the velocity will gradually decrease to the minimum velocity there. And the pressure will gradually increase to there. Now, say we range the system so that just as the pipe closed, the wave got to there. Well, actually, what, what you would find is actually that the pressure that you generate there would gradually increase, and it would actually be this, this, this Joukowsky equation there. That would determine what the maximum pressure rise you would get there is. Well, let's say we closed it even slower, so that when we got to there, we were only half closed. What would happen then? Well, it would still increase, but, but if we've got half the flow out coming out at that, that particular instant in time, the pressure rise would only be half of that, so you just get half of that pressure at that stage. But the wave would then be reflected back, coming back in this direction now, so the wave would be coming back in this direction. This valve is still continuing to close, and the pressure is still continuing to rise. It, at this end of the pipe, it has no knowledge of what's happening down here. It's still pressure, it's still, its pressure is still continuing to rise. And it will continue to rise, okay, until this pressure wave gets back up to there. So actually, as long as the valve is closed, by the time the wave goes up and down, you will get um, this full Joukowsky water hammer effect. But, the effect, if it was a two time, would be very, would only last for a much shorter length of time. So in other words, the time at which the pipeline would be pressurized would be less. But from a pipeline design point of view, or pipe strength point, that doesn't make any difference. It's just the fact that you get up to the pressure. That's the thing that's going to cause the damage. So for water hammer, for true water hammer, the Joukowsky equation to be true, basically the time that it takes to close is got to be faster than 2L on C. Okay, so it's two times the length on C. So if we went back to the previous example of the water, the, the 20 meters of pipe, copper pipe, um, that would come out at a time of 0.03 seconds, something around about that. That's pretty quick, so it would be quite hard actually to close a valve. That's why in sort of domestics and plumbing you don't often get very significant 
water hammer. However, let's take another example. So you had a sort of a, uh, a 10 millimeter, 10 kilometer long pipeline, okay, which was an oil pipeline or a water pipeline, um, and you might have a, a, a wave speed of say a thousand meters a second. So if we do that, so if we have 10 kilometers, that's 10 times 10 to the three times two, and the wave speed was say a thousand meters per second, okay, that equals 20 seconds. That could be a significant problem. And when you've got long pipes, water hammer and jacuzzi becomes much more of an issue. Now in my next video on this subject, I'm going to look at what happens when there is a branch and you have a surge of a water hammer effect. So if you have a pipeline and there's a branch coming off it, and that's a dead end branch, branch. You can get some quite interesting effects going on in that branch, so I'd like to discuss that. Thank you for watching. Please, if you want to find a little bit more about me, have a look at my website at fluidmechanics.co.uk. I'll be very grateful if you could like this video on YouTube. Thank you. Bye bye.